So hello everybody, it is Friday, so it's time for another Dax Fridays, a new Dax function every Friday. And I think I owe you a proper performance trick, don't I, after yesterday's video. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to show you one way that is actually easy for you, <laughs> this is for real, to improve the performance of your models. Let's get started. Okay, so after yesterday's video, I owe you a proper performance video, don't I? So this is for real. We're going to, I'm going to show you a very, very easy way to improve the performance of your models. And this is something that I've been battling for uh, the last couple of weeks. So I thought, uh, hey, let me show it to everybody. So here's the thing. I have here the North Wind data set, but I have modified it a little. So we still have... We have an order details, order and product table. I removed all the other ones because we don't need them for now. And there is a small catch to this. As you can see, the product ID is a long string. This happens very often when you're connecting to ERP systems and, you know, data warehouses. They have this type of, I, they are called something, some hashed key or something. And uh, I have, if you look at my model, I have product ID from the order details call it to product and then uh, do, 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 do. I have order ID going to the orders table there is a one thing that you need to know before we move forward and is that that order ID I've created it if we go here to promote the headers you see that there's an order ID a details ID I need those both columns in order to connect to orders so I have actually created a third column you can see there and then I remove the, so I just have one order ID, okay? It is going to be important later. That's why I'm showing you. <laughs> okay, let's close that. So in the Northwind data set, the one that we've always worked with, the tables don't look like that. So you have for product, you will see that the key is a number. That should tell you something. And then in the order details, you see that order ID is also a number, okay? So what is the difference? And here's the thing, I've been working with a customer, we are using a, a third party source, we don't know the database, so we get this type of data. And these data, you know, these tables are big, so it is actually a problem. And we're going to see that if we open DAX Studio. And take a look at the size of those columns. So I'm going to go in there, connect. So now I'm going to connect with the one that has the long ID strings first, okay? So you connect to it, you go to advanced view metrics, and DAX Studio has a very nice summary here. First, it will tell you the, the cardinality is how many unique values you have. So how well the VertiPack engine has actually managed to compress the data. Obviously, order details is going to be the largest one. It has the, lo the largest amount of IDs and I think the number, largest amount of rows. Here you can see the column size. I think this is kilobyte, bytes, I think it's byte, um, the data. And then you can see if it is, um, if you open up, you can see the each column the, um, value. And then you can see here how much it takes. So as you can see here, order ID, you know, the order ID that we created concatenating the both takes 33% of the data, of, of the data, of the size of the model. So 33% goes to, to manage that order ID. And then we have sales always, you know, depending on the number of decimals, that's also something to think about. Sales is probably going to be a fairly unique number. If you have whole numbers, it will compress better. But sometimes, you know, you are not able to. And then product ID, you have it here. So it says 13.17, uh, and you can see that they are strings, they are text. So I'm going to now connect to the, uh, the normal, the, the, the um, Northwind data set that Microsoft provides, and you're going to see the difference because I'm going to put this side by side. So we go back to, oh, no, I don't want to save. We go back home and we connect to the north wind, the real north wind, connect. Refresh just in case. And then I'm going to view the metrics. Now, I haven't deleted all the tables, so everything is in here, but let's look at, look at all the details. 
you can see here that order ID 200,000 column size, this is 96 column size, which is incredible, right? And this is because of this integer there. Both of those are integers, which makes everything small. But you can see now the difference, right, of using you know, when you have, when you're going to have keys in your model, which you obviously need in order to be able to connect the tables, try to have an, a number. And if you have these hash or whatever keys that are called like long text key strings, try to get rid of them because they take too much space in your model. And this is a very, very good example of that. One thing that I was wondering though, I was thinking like, let me connect back to, to our hashed uh, model and I'm going to go back here I'm going to go up here and you know I often when I get you know when customers come and say I have performance problems a lot of times I see a lot of ID keys everywhere that they are not used I want to show you something I'm going to remove the part where I get rid of the order detail and I detail ID that I don't need anymore I'm gonna leave them there and load let me save and then I am going to go back to Duck Studio, refresh. I don't know if I need to refresh, I refresh anyhow. And then you are going to see here order ID, order ID, detail ID. Look at the column size, look at the size now from 200 to 8 million, like eight, I guess you said mega. That is incredible, isn't it? So make sure you clean. I mean, I understand that you probably want to have some complicated DAX thing in order to be able to optimize your model, but your big wins are in these small changes. So get rid of all the columns that you don't need, especially if they are keys. Make your keys numbers. And this takes me to part two of all these things. Okay, let's say that you're stuck with, like we are at the moment, we're stuck with this. We don't own the data set. So you can come to me and they're like, okay, great, but how do I do that? Well, there are ways actually. One way is you can go back to the vendor and say, hey, can you please create a view for us? Which would be the best way. If they don't do it, you have two other options. Number one, you can create the key in here. So we have, let me get rid of, uh, but I don't need to. Let's do all the details. Yeah, let's do it like that. You won't need to, but you don't need to do it like this. Let me remove this one. So now we have order details, order ID, details ID. We are going to duplicate this one. And I'm going to keep these two only. Remove the columns. And then I'm going to uh, remove duplicate in case there are any and then I am going to add an index right and once I have the index I can use this that index to merge and you know merge operations are not great so this is going to make it a longer refresh time but once everything has refreshed it's going to be easier on your model so you can put it into our order details there and then you just go order boom boom and then you grab your index get rid of that and now you have your index id and then you can do obviously the same merge here on orders and use that column when you are doing the relationships is this an optimal way? No, because mainly because it involves a merge. Again, Power Query merge, mm, not very good. Depends on if the merge can be done, you know, back at the source. Uh, another option is use data flow. So do these transformations in a data flow and then consume the data already clean from there. So there are obviously options, even though if you don't own the data set. If you own the data, you always can move it somewhere else and do the transformations that you need. But uh, remember, the changes, your small changes, just can make such a huge difference on how well or how bad your model performs. So 
I hope that this video makes up for yesterday's video. I would really hope I was able to put a smile on your face. That was the only intention. And I made the video as short as possible so you didn't feel that you lose your time watching it. But I really enjoyed doing it, actually. I thought it was quite fun. Anyhow, I am going to see you again on Monday with a... I think it's like a visualization trick video. So see you on Monday. Enjoy your Easter holidays. It's beautiful sun here. I have to get out <laughs> because it's Friday and I should be on holidays. Enjoy your holidays too. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.